Where's the timer? Okay. Um, yes, my name is Piotr Prince. I'm an uh, editor of the Journal of Open Source Software, and I'm going to introduce that to you today. Uh, a number of you probably have seen it already or heard of it. Um, these are the editors and editor in chief. Uh, Roman, are you here? Can you stand up? He's not here. Okay, he left it to me to fend for myself. All right. So, what is JOS? How does it work? Um, how are we doing? And what is the future? That's what I'm going to talk about. So, in, two years ago, I wrote a, a paper, a correspondence in a traditional journal called uh, Nature Biotechnology. And what we were we were worried about the career prospects of bioinformaticians, people who code in bioinformatics, people who write source code, people like me. And uh, one of the th things that we came up with is that software <coughs> contributions actually count to the scientific record. I mean, many papers that get published in high impact journals include significant bioinformatic work, novelty, etc. And usually the, you know, the, the, the authors are, are lucky to get on the paper and, and usually they're in the middle somewhere. So how do, you, how do you deal with that? And <clears throat> one thing we, we thought as well, okay, you know, every software release can be made uh, a digital object identifier, something that can be cited. And there's another thing is that many, many software developers don't produce papers. I don't know about you, who, who, who likes producing papers here? Any hands? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still coding? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and the reason we don't like to do it is because it's not dry, right? We do not like to repeat ourselves. And it's also not agile, right? Uh, if, we, if we in the morning we stand up, right, and we, we, we say, hey, okay, what, are gonna, what, are, what am I going to work on today? <clears throat> it somehow ends up at the end of the list. And then there's, you know, work pressure from others, you know, it's pushing us. And so you're, you're always, you know, uh, time writing papers sort of bites into time writing code. It doesn't feel like work to me. The other the insight I had is, you know, the source code is a story. Because if I, if I look for somebody's uh, credibility, if I go online and want to see, you know, if, uh, if somebody is very promising as a coder or whatever, I'm not going to read his papers or her papers, right? I'm going to look at the code. So the well-written code is a story. So after that uh, publication, we kept on thinking and talking and sending email messages to each other, and uh, we came up with a list of things. So you know, I was ready to actually create a journal. I held it off, you know, because I, I realized it would be a lot of work. But um, and we also discussed with editors of JORS and of F1000 who are here. Um, and we wanted to move. And then something came out of the blue and it's called the Journal of Open Source Software. So great ideas come at the same time. That's what it amounts to. Yeah, so, and JAWS is very close to what I wanted to do. Um, a little, you know, it's close. So it's based on GitHub. The whole infrastructure of GitHub is used. Um, and the whole review system is handled through GitHub issue trackers. And this works out remarkably well. And what is the JOS paper? It's really just a short description of the software, right? And I'm going to, if I can get this Windows machine to work, let me see. So this is one of our projects, gnetwork.org. <clears throat> and below this, we have a badge of honor. And this is a JOS badge. It takes me to the paper, right? And this is the paper. You've got the authors, a few links, a summary, we put in a screenshot, obligatory for us. We discuss future work, and then you have the references of the paper. So this is, this is all, and this is actually, for JOS standards, this is already a pretty long paper. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look in the review, you can, it will take you to the issue tracker, right? And there's a checklist for the, for the reviewer, and there's some discussion going on. You know, and the original was, the review started, uh, let me see, May, May 30, and it ended, uh, I'm a little bit challenged with the mouse, it ended, exactly, well, two weeks later, well, a bit longer than that, but three weeks, say, say three weeks, okay?
and you get a DOI from JOS, which is under the, under the badge. And uh, JOS is a full academic journal. You have to appreciate that. And JOS is free. So some champion papers, there are two, two which jump out. So one has already 66 citations, corner.py, and another has got 45 citations, armadillo. Um, these authors, they're getting credit for their work, credit for the software. Um, they're adding to the scientific track record, and they're actually working on their scientific careers, right? Because they have something that is cited by other people. Armadillo actually published in another journal too, which is also heavily cited. Um, so if you publish in Josh, you can also publish in another journal and vice versa. Some numbers for the first year. Uh, we have 17 editors, six are bioinformaticians. 123 uh, accepted papers, majority is Python and R. 63 are under review now. There are 93 unique reviewers. Um, it's about a month median review time and today was the fastest review. And that's fast. Yeah, I don't know if you have any experience with journals, but. <clears throat> like I said, it's based on GitHub. Um, submitters need to have Git, GitHub accounts, as well as editors and the reviewers. Um, and it's a geeky journal, so we actually have an artificial intelligence called Whedon. It interferes, it interferes with the review process, just so you are aware. <laughs> Everything and everyone is named in public. So how do you submit, right? Basically, you can put your software on GitHub. You can put it somewhere else too, we don't care. You know, as long as we can somehow generate a DOI. So from GitHub, you can, do a, you can generate a Zenodo DOI, but you, can, you could also use a Figshare uh, DOI for your release software, right? So basically, your release software is a, is a tarball of software. It's a certain state of the software at that point in time. Actually, with Zenodo, it's a GitHub hash. Now, there's Roman, standing at the pillar, <laughs> my fellow editor. Um, to submit to JOS, you, you open a screen, you fill in a few fields. Basically, you, you connect the dots, you know, the GitHub repository, your GitHub name. Um, and a bit more information. And then you write your paper. I mean, you've seen it, right? It took me a few hours to write that. And it's free of charge to submit to JOS, right? I, I did say that before, right? Um, and one uh, fellow submitter of mine said, you know, from now on, I'm only submitting to JOS. Only. So then you have the review process, right? So the editor, someone like me, will start looking for a reviewer. Sorry, yeah, for a reviewer. So we contact people in the community. Um, and the, once a review accepts to do it, he will have a checklist he has to go through. And one of them is the, uh, he has to check for the license. So we only deal with open source software. So we have to have an open source license. And su surprisingly, still people submit stuff without <laughs> license attached. <clears throat> um, and you know, you have to, the reviewer will look for some type of scientific justification, but we're actually very liberal in that. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've public, I've, I mean, as a reviewer and editor, I've accepted a, a game that was submitted, but it was a game in molecular biology, so. Um, other topics we have, like testing and performance, are actually optional. <coughs> One important thing is that the reviewer should be able to run the software, and we will ask them to do that. So if you submit your open source software, which is written in MATLAB, right, you may have a problem. Um, and funnily enough, the, the review itself can be done in an hour in general, right? We don't really want to advertise this. This is a secret, right? <laughs> but actually, the review process is so uh, uh, structured and, and uh, online, and, and we made it, make it really easy with our bot, our, our artificial intelligence. But you have to appreciate that the re review itself is actually rigorous. So your paper got accepted, right? You get a DOI from JOS. And you get a beautiful JOS tag, JOS tag. And this is what happens when you take a vector image and translate it into a bitmap and then put it in tech. <laughs> I'm sure other people can do better. Um, then you can add the, the, the DOI, you can actually add to Google Scholar, PubMed, and ISS in principle, right? Um, and Google Scholar is, is going to do it automatically very soon. We're, we're, we're very close to doing that. Um, PubMed will go in time. You know, they, they, they want to, for a journal, they want to see it has, actually has biomedical relevance. And if you have enough papers, at some point they say, okay, you know, it's crossed my heart. 
then, um, then you can decide your own paper, right? I mean, to build up scientific credibility, one of the standard practices is really to cite your own papers. That's <laughs> <laughs> and then you should sit back and enjoy and enjoy them coming in, right? Sometimes you have to sit back. You have to relax and enjoy. We don't do that enough, to be honest. So <clears throat> the last few years I've been playing Docker bingo. Any time Docker got mentioned in the talk, I say bingo. Um, so Docker, Docker is now mentioned almost every talk, so it's not worth it anymore. So uh, now I'm playing fair bingo. <laughs> <laughs> so fair means findable, accessible, interoperable, reproducible. No, no, no. That's a bridge too far. Reusable. Yeah, so fair in terms of uh, JOS, I can say, you know, we, we, do, we are building up metadata on publication software so people can find your stuff, which is really important. Um, every, everything we do is based on URIs, universal resource indicators, locators, Identifier. identifiers, thank you, <laughs> and referenced. And your software it can be interoperable and reusable, yeah, provided you bundle it with GNU Geeks or Debian or Conda. There's another issue that we discussed uh, actually this conference is uh, what if uh, you know, I have a, a huge project and somebody publishes it once, right, and gets, and these authors, they're the lucky ones because they get all the credit. Like in the case of BioPro, which was published in 2002, they have 1,500 citations, these five lucky authors, Hilmar. <laughs> it's not fair, you know, and it's not fair, and that's a different fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be nice, you know, to give to scientific credit to people who actually do significant contributions later, right? So with JOS, uh, we haven't done this yet, but in principle, you could, you could I mean, JOS, a JOS paper is, is attached to a release of your software. So you can, over time, if you have significant contributions, build up different papers with different authors and different attributions. And you can also question, you know, if you have just one paper that everybody, you know, only a few people get the credits, is it actually in the end detrimental to the project, you know? I don't know how well BioProl is doing today. <laughs> so in short, we are a new breed of journal, you know, it's, it's, it's not disruptive, I think, it's, but it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, we are def definitely at one end of this spectrum, call it geeky. It minimizes the pain, it maximizes the result from our point of view. It allows software authors to make their work visible. It allows you to build up your academic track record, and this is really important. Yeah, you have to do this. So I say publish early and often. You know, it's an open source mantra. There's no good reason not to publish in Josh. Jos, sorry. That's the wrong journal. Jos. So JOS will stay free. The current uh, cost is about $3 per paper. We just got a grant for $19,000. Uh, we are we're really aiming high. We want, we're aiming for automated indexing. Um, we are on GitHub, but we can move off, you know, but the community thing kind of works at the moment, so it's really nice. Um, we invite new reviewers. We invite new editors, seriously. Yeah, so if you're interested, come and talk to me. There's, there's going to be a BOF, Birds of a Feather session, during lunch today. These are some resources. The, the slides will be available online. And then we, I've got one extra slide. Is that three minutes or three seconds? Uh, one minute. <laughs> it's gone down rapidly. Is Toshiaki here? Uh, he was drinking beer last night <coughs> and sequencing it. Yeah, so. There are three, there are three uh, conferences in the world I really love going to. You know, one of them is this one and the Code Fest before it. The other one is the Biohackathon in Japan, and this is the 10th edition. And the third one is FOSDEM in Brussels. You should, all, you should go to FOSDEM if you have a chance. It's really awesome. Um, anyway, the, this is the 10th Biohackathon, and it's open to, to people who want to come. Yeah, and, and the word FAIR, or the FAIR data thing, was actually invented in Japan a couple of years back. Right? So we... We are cutting edge, we're doing cutting edge stuff. We're actually brewing our own beer. Yeah, and we should sequence it. Yeah, it's gonna be our biohackathon beer. So at the end of the day, there's gonna be a biohackathon birds of a feather session with, with Toshiaki, who came all the way from Japan just to talk about this biohackathon. 
Yeah, so if you're interested, come and see him. Thank you.